Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA video, we're gonna be talking about how much money you're gonna need to buy all the new content from the San Andreas Mercenaries update. We'll be looking at all the vehicles and cars, the clothing, weapons, and a whole lot more, and just how much cash you're gonna need to purchase everything. So let's start with the vehicles, because I think that's going to be the biggest part of this DLC, is all the new cars and aircrafts. And let's actually start with our new land vehicles. We'll begin with a brand new Gauntlet EV, which also has Imani Tech. We saw this in one of the very first screenshots that Rockstar actually showed off. And I can only imagine this is going to be one of the most expensive vehicles from this update. Really, any car that has a Monitech since Rockstar has introduced this has become incredibly pricey because it gives you the ability to not be locked on to missile jammers. You can armorize your vehicle, if that's even a word. And on top of it all, it's based off of the concept of an electric muscle car. So Rockstar knows not only the cool factor of it, the rarity of it, and it's a brand new vehicle that isn't even in production. So because of that, it's going to have a hefty price tag. The next vehicle is the Maibatsu Monstrosity. Now, we actually know this is called the Maibatsu Monstrosity for two reasons. Number one, we can actually see the name of it in the latest artwork that Rockstar provided for the teaser trailer that they put out earlier today. And we also know about this vehicle because it's a part of Grand Theft Auto history. The Monstrosity is a sport utility vehicle that is mentioned in both Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto 4. And even though it's not seen in any of the games, it is referenced several times on talk radio shows. For instance, in Grand Theft Auto 3, a caller on Chatterbox FM was stopped by the police while driving her monstrosity recklessly to get to the hospital. And in Grand Theft Auto 4, a caller to the conservative talk show, The Richard Bastian Show, on the radio station WKTT, says that Americans drive incredibly large, polluting my Batsu monstrosities that destroy the environment. So this car has been around in Grand Theft Auto history for a long time, but this will be the first appearance that will actually have it, be able to drive it, customize it, all that sort of good stuff. So that is our second land vehicle. Now, our third vehicle today was first spotted in the teaser trailer that Rockstar released a few hours ago, and that is the Bravado Hot Ring Gauntlet. Now, we don't know what the name of this one is going to be called, but we do know that it's a brand new vehicle, and it looks like it is kind of based off of a NASCAR vehicle, given the roll cages on the inside, the netting on the windows, the NASCAR-style wheels and tires. It looks like it has a ton of custom you can only hope that this one maybe is an HSW option for those of us on the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. It certainly looks like it has a lot of customization options, but we will just have to wait and see. And last but not least, there was actually one more land vehicle. I was actually wrong about this on my trailer breakdown. We have a brand new trophy truck. I actually thought this was just the regular trophy truck. It kind of makes you think, is this going to be like an electric version or an EV trophy truck? It's actually based on the Brenthal Industries Class 1 buggy, so this looks like it's going to be a pretty cool off-road vehicle. It was also shown off in the artwork as well. Again, something I totally missed from my previous video. It looks like it has a lot of cool customization, a ton of different light bar options, lots of liveries. So that's going to be a really fun vehicle. So right off the bat, you've got four land vehicles. And if we just want to assume that these are a million dollars each, which it's probably going to end up being more than that, that right there is $4 million, and that doesn't even get you any single customization. We'll talk about that at the end. But then we have some new aircrafts to talk about as well. The first, of course, is our F-35 fighter jet. Now, I can imagine this thing is going to be incredibly expensive. It already comes with a ton of features that we know about. It comes with a new EXER mode. I'm not sure what that does, but it can be seen in one of the in-game screenshots. It also has an unlimited amount of front cannons, missiles, and homing missiles. So needless to say, this thing is going to be pretty unstoppable. It also has VTOL capabilities, vertical takeoff, and landing. So this thing is going to be pretty elusive. It's also going to be very handy in tight situations. So you can only imagine that one's going to be a couple of million dollars as well. Then you have the twin Eagle aircraft, the Beagle. This is returning from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. 
Typically, when Rockstar bring back vehicles from existing games, they put a pretty high price tag on them because of the nostalgia factor. You're going to see something from San Andreas and you're going to say, ah, I know what that vehicle is. I've used it before. I want it. And they're going to get you for a more expensive price tag on the vehicle. So just be wary of that that the Beagle is returning and it's coming back from San Andreas. And then our last aircraft is the Armored Kanata. And this one looks like it could be a Mark II version or a new one altogether. It also looks like there's a Golden Merryweather version that they showed off on the artwork earlier today. I don't know if that one will also be available to purchase or if that is going to be sort of a exclusive unlock that you get for maybe completing all the various missions. And I'm just going to say this conservatively. I think all these new aircrafts are going to cost $3 million each. It's probably going to be more than that. That's pretty conservative. So you've got $9 million just in your aircrafts. You've got $4 million just in your land vehicles. So that brings us up to $13 million. Then let's just, for easy math's sake, tack on $2 million of customization. That might not get you necessarily everything you want. That's $15 million just on new vehicles alone. Now, we need to talk about the Avenger because it looks like there's going to be some things that you're going to have to pay for on the Avenger. And the first one is a new weapon system. So we saw this in the trailer that this thing can drop some serious bombs on people. That, I don't believe, is going to be free, nor is the new Avenger Command Center, I would reckon, in order to start these brand new missions. I bet there's going to be an entry price to adding this into your Avenger, as well as the ability to store it in the hangar. Now, that might be an upgrade to your hangar. You might actually have to add storage for the Avenger if you don't already have one. And you also have the ability to access your Avenger without owning a hangar or facility property. So who knows if there'll be some upgrades that you have to pay for tied to that, as well as the ability to store the thruster in the Avenger. There's a good chance that that might be an add-on upgrade as well. And on top of it, if you don't have a hangar or you don't have an Avenger, that's something you're going to have to buy right now if you really want to take advantage of all the new stuff that this update is going to provide. So we're going to have a little bit of a fork in the road here. If you already own these things, great. You're going to be on one side of the fork where you're only probably going to have to pay for the new weapon system, command center, storing things like the thruster, and maybe having access inside of your hangar. If you don't have the Avenger or the hangar, you're going to go down another fork in the road where you're going to have to buy those things and get them all set up so that you can enjoy all the new content. Now, a few more things I've noticed from the trailers and the screenshots that it looks like you're gonna have to pay for, some new clothing. So there's a couple new cool accessories like dog tag chains, there's masks, there look like there's new tech gear as well. There's definitely gonna be new pants and new tops. All that stuff is going to add up. And it looks like there's a couple of other things as well. We know that there's going to be at least one new haircut. You'll have to pay for that. And there's going to be two new weapons. We've seen a tactical SMG, which Rockstar has mentioned on the Newswire. But it looks like there's one other assault rifle that I haven't really seen before. It looks like they're going to be adding that to the game as well. So all of that combined could easily be another million or two dollars on top of everything else we've had to purchase in this update. And that's just the content that we know so far. We obviously know there's going to be a lot of stuff from this update that is going to be available in the drip feed over the next couple of weeks and months, which will not be available on day one, which is a good news, bad news scenario. Bad news, we don't get access to the content on launch day, but good news, it gives us a chance to save up and make some money so that we can afford all that content. So another bit of good news is all of it will not be available on day one. So you won't have to have the full bucket of money to buy everything. You'll have the chance to earn it with the new stuff that comes in this update. And if you're short on cash right now, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one, you can sort of share the load with friends or crew members. One thing I like to do is maybe you get the Gauntlet EV, your friend gets the new trophy truck. You can swap them back and forth. Same thing with the Gauntlet and the Maibatsu Monstrosity. You and a crew member go back and forth. You decide what you want. Obviously, on release day, I'll be trying out, testing all the new vehicles, all the new content, so you can watch me spend my own money and then make your own informed decisions from there. 
But all in all, I don't see this being an incredibly expensive update because there doesn't look like there's going to be like one massive property that you have to buy. But there is going to be some pretty expensive vehicles. We know those fighter jets are expensive. Amani Tech cars can get expensive. So I still think you're going to need in the realm of 25 to $30 million to buy everything in this update. And you might even need a little bit more by the time we incorporate the drip feed. But that's where I would feel comfortable if I wanted to buy everything in this DLC. Let me know how much money you think you're going to need in the update, though, in those comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. You want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and all the Rockstar Games videos that I'll be doing here on my channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work. And if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.